What are the challenges women are facing in Benue State and what is affecting them? Okay. There are lots of challenges women are facing in Benue State. First is poverty. Uh, poverty has hit a lot of women such that this poverty has been. Welcome to Voices of Benue. Women's Perspectives on Life and Challenges, an enlightening video series presented by the Daughters of Sheba Foundation. Our focus is on Benue State, Nigeria, where we amplify the voices of women, showcasing their triumphs and challenges through in-depth interviews and poignant narratives. Each episode dives into the real-life stories of women from diverse backgrounds, exploring a wide range of issues that affect their daily lives. From the hurdles of preparing for a new school year to the victories in entrepreneurship and community leadership, Voices of Banu shines a light on the dynamic and resilient spirit of these incredible women. This collaboration with our member, Gabriel Mailumo, reinforces our dedication to empowering and uplifting women globally. This series is committed to highlighting the everyday heroines of Banue giving them a platform to share their stories, inspire change, and foster a deeper understanding of the unique challenges they face. Join us as we explore the heart and soul of Banu through the eyes of its women. This series promises to be as varied as it is inspiring. Stay tuned, engage with us, and become part of a journey that transcends borders, celebrating the strength and resilience of the women of Banu and beyond. This is Gadi Layout in Makwadi, Benue State of Nigeria. Gadi Layout is almost at the outskirts of the town. We are coming to meet Mrs. Nini in her house to, to have an interview with her this afternoon. Thank you, ma. Please. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. Yes. What are the challenges women are facing in Benue State and what is affecting you? Okay. There are a lot of challenges women are facing in Benue State. First is poverty. Uh, poverty has hit a lot of women such that this poverty has led into ill health that has involved all their family members. Children get sick because of lack of food, you know? As they eat, food gives you energy and makes you healthy. So because they are poor, they lack the finance. to get food, you know it. They lack the finances, the resources, to get food. And so when you don't eat food, you know, ill health is subject to getting into you. And because of the ill health, the child is almost dying. I had sent money that they convey the child back to town so that we look into his health. So poverty has engulfed the women such that even what to do has become a very difficult thing. Because it's this money they have that they can even go and make themselves farm. So if you don't have the resources, you don't have the money to go into the farm, you cannot make anything reasonable. That's true. So poverty is one key thing that is killing these women. And so much such that things have become so difficult, so expensive, that the little they have, they cannot even buy anything with it. And some of them are not breadwinners. Some of them are even widows, you know. 
they have lost their husbands as a result of uh, so many issues uh, farmers uh, does uh, clashes and all of that yes, yes. you know uh, some of them have left even their sons that were helping them their husband died the sons that were helping them were killed during, so, the, clashes. during the clashes and it's basically them the women alone that are living so poverty uh, lack of education is a so during the clashes and it's basically them the women alone that are living so poverty uh, lack of education is another thing because they are not educated they are in the rural areas where they have no um, financial constraint to uh, like send their children to school and even themselves help themselves i mean so many things like that okay okay so, okay okay so what are the things that you do to uplift women around you it's not easy yes. it is not easy you know what i basically do is the little i have as in money from my salary i divide it among them when i get it first of them i gather them together you know as a professional i'm a theater artist so in trying to bring them out of the trauma that they have gotten themselves into i gather them around try to teach them how to like overcome these situations and then after that i from gathering things from people if i, I can go to people's houses uh, the little you have maybe clothing old clothes yes, like yes, that i yes. gather it and then take it all. this poverty has given they don't even have uh, shelter they don't have clothing no food and all of that so i go into people's home people things that they are they have stopped using even though it's just that they have stopped using them they may not be too bad and they are collected stick it to them share it with them and then some persons will also help us to get some small small food small money i take it to them we share together the little we have we make use of it okay. and all of that okay and then some few years ago there was a there was farmer header clashes in Benue State, which sent many people into the internally displaced people's camp yes. that the government constituted. Yes. I learned that you visited yes. in the camp. The basic thing they are facing there is shelter, like I said. If you go to the camp, you see the tent with which these women are sleeping in, you will shed tears. It's like they are in a camp where today they are going to like go out of the camp, but it is a permanent thing. They will just make some netting and then sleep inside with their children. If they are cooking there, if at all they have food, they are sleeping there. So shelter is one of the biggest problems they are encountering in that camp. Secondly, what to eat because there are so many there. The government has been trying to like reach out to them but you know because there are so many and you know the authorities people that they have put in in, in charge of them when they bring these pilates i will call it doesn't reach out to all of them what happens is that people that they know and they want to favor that's what they do and the women especially they have this challenge of if somebody doesn't come to you or if somebody doesn't favor you you will not get food at all on that day what happens to that people that they know and they want to favor that's what they do and the women especially they have this challenge of if somebody doesn't come to you or if somebody doesn't favor you you will not get food at all on that day and what happens is that sometimes they lure them into issues of sleeping with them before getting those things. They will give their body to them because they want to get some favor from them. It is not out of their, I mean, from their will, yeah. but just because they want to like get something to eat. So they give the, their body, especially the young ladies. It is not somebody you love, but because you feel that person is capable enough to like help you. You just give yourself in order to survive. 
So they have a lot of challenges there. I, I learned that some of them even get married while they come. Yes, home. that's what I'm trying to even say. They get married to people whom they feel, you know, the men, the few men that are there, sometimes they go out to search for food. So when they come and the ladies feel that, ah, this one has something to offer to me at the moment of their needs, they just give themselves to them. They marry them. It's not as if it is out of love. It is not out of love, but just because of what they will, they will get at the moment. The suffering has become so, I mean, so bad that they will just go to marry somebody whom they don't even like. Go to marry somebody whom they don't even like. I mean, love. During so, your visit there, did you encounter pregnant women in the country? A lot of them. They were small, small women who gave birth to small infants, small, small children. And those children became also sick because of lack of care. I had to take uh, some of my uh, things that I went, my children are no longer using to give these uh, uh, women so that they will help. A woman I, I encountered with so many women who uh, had... Uh, uh, issues of a bad condition that even when they delivered, they were not properly cared for. They had infections onto themselves and the children. I mean, the child they gave birth to. So, infection has set into their lack of care and all of that. So, they are really suffering. It is really, really bad. If you go there, the sight is really bad. It's bad. And that is how it is with all the women in the society here we so, so, what do you think the Benue State government is doing to empower women in Benue State? The Benue State government is doing when um, the government, when the governor came in, he was actually trying to look into the situation of the women when he said he was going to have organizations to like borrow them, loan them money, but it's just a meager amount of money. So but that, that they can go not, into agriculture. Yes, they can go into agriculture mm -hmm. and even and even if it reaches out, the people in authority, some people don't even I mean as they hand it, this money to them to like uh give out to the women, it is not all that gets. So these challenges are still there as much as I have said, there are so many challenges. challenges. Yes. Yes. That's good. Okay. Um, so, so Miss, Mrs. Mimi, what do you do for a living? I am a lecturer with the College of Education Katsunaola. I have been lecturing for 19 years now. And like I said earlier, it is this little salary I get that I reach out to this student with my family. So it is not really easy at all. Yeah. Yes. I work with the government, Benue State government. And that is where and even with me too, it's still very difficult because for the past nine months, we are still living in areas. Salaries were not paid. And so for me to reach out with, to the women as expected, it was not forthcoming. So, okay, don't you have any side business that you do along with? I, I, I do some farm work. Okay. I do some farm work. I also rear some animals like that but it's not easy insecurity is another thing that is killing us two weeks back they stole two of my goats right in front of my can you imagine that uh, two of my big goats he goats that the, the i tied there they came out losing them and they left me stranded like that so insecurity is one of the things that is also killing us in this community thank you very much you for so this interview thank, thank you, you. So thank you for welcoming us yes. we hope you found this glimpse into the life and challenges of the women of Banu interesting. Please like and share to help us spread the information about this community in Nigeria. Also, please subscribe to our channel and help us grow. Thank you for watching. Until next time.